Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to be taking a look at a new video with you all today. This time we are going to the Ukraine at an event called Swing It Reboot 2021, and I'm going to be scrutinizing this Strictly Lindy competition. For those of you all who do not know, the Strictly Lindy is a little bit of choreography and a lot of social dancing. I don't know who's going to be in this competition. Let's get right into it. Got some fancy camera work going. <laughs> this guy in the audience is loving it. Yeah, I feel it. I feel your energy. Yeah, that was good. I wasn't sure if she fell or not. <laughs> yeah! He's great. This is a good one. Yeah, this is a great couple. Smiling at the camera. <laughs> I love that when they do that. Yeah, you know what's great about a few of these dancers is they are able to just kind of go from choreography and switch right back into social dancing. I like that. <laughs> okay, this looks like they have a round two.
<laughs> like that exit. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I first got to give a shout out to my favorite crowd participant. I don't know where I've heard him before, but he's he's awesome. I wish everybody was as enthusiastic as this kind of person in the audience. Thank you for that. I love it. Big shout out to the clarinet player. It is not an easy instrument to play. I'm actually learning how to play the clarinet right now, and I am just blown away by its complexity. So big shout out for crushing those notes. Now, I must give you guys a caveat here just to let some of you all know. Lindy Hop is incredibly subjective, and many people use words that others use and they have completely different meanings so don't get your hopes up too much and having some uniformity of meaning and purpose and value system because it's all different i'm the only one you're going to find out here on the internet that's going to tell you at least my foundation and somewhat of a resemblance of what everybody else is kind of seeing as common sense of what looks good but i like to break down those details and what they actually mean in an attempt to bring some type of coherency to this process. So I gotta say, anytime you see open in a competition, just the word open, it can mean anything. It can mean we just started dancing last week and now we're gonna jump into a competition. Or it can mean this is the only competition we're having this evening and these are the only dancers that we have they just so happen to be amazing and awesome, so they're just gonna compete. And so you never know really what you're gonna get until you see the open competition. And in this case, it's a mixed bag. You're gonna have some dancers that are really good, which I notice, and then you have some that you can tell that are just kind of in that process of figuring things out. And so my value system shifts a little bit when we deal with the open because not everybody's on the same level and everybody tends to have some trouble balancing transitions in their movement. Now, that's not everybody, but usually the, the first place person tends to have grown past that, th that couple, but usually if you're at the open level, meaning introductory competition, usually there's some trouble with the transitions, and boy, I gotta tell you, I was really impressed to see my third place couple really shine for me. I did not see a whole lot of trouble on the transitions. And I think that's incredibly impressive. Uh, the follower, let's see, the follower had white shirt. The leader had a burgundy shirt. Watch how they're coming out. Look at this. They're able to hang on to those fundamentals. She's staying on the line. He's moving around the line, creating space for the follower. It's awesome. Even this transition here, that's pretty hard to lead. Now, that could have been their choreographed part, but I'm going to tell you right now, it still looked like it was led. And that was incredibly... Um, timely and controlled. I even like the split at the end. I'm not sure if he ripped his pants. I've done that many times during a competition with no backup. Uh, but yeah, he crushed this, she crushed this. They worked together in this and it, it really looked like they were in control of those, uh, the transitions. And that's a really hard thing to do in the open level at their level. I kind of noticed a certain level that they're at 
And there was another couple who was kind of at the same level who did it just a little bit better. And this is my second place couple. Uh, this couple was the very first couple. She had like a blue skirt on and he had like a white flower shirt, like a Miami Vice kind of shirt. <laughs> yeah, watch again. They're moving on lines. The shapes look very traditional. Some will judge it and say, well, it's boring. Not really. In my eyes, I see it's fundamental and they understand how the, the shapes work. Now look at that amazing transition from going from that tandem to doing hand-to-hand -hand crossing over is not an easy thing to do. And yes, again, it could have been a choreographed movement. But what I liked about them is that it didn't look choreographed and they were able to go right into all those cool little tricks and aerials at the end of their set, which was choreographed and that's that's the key part when you're doing the strictly competition is to be able to segue from uh, social dancing into choreography and back and make it seem seamless and i think that couple really nailed it they were spot on um, i liked it and i'm going to tell you right now my first place couple had that distinguishing factor that separated the second place in the first place they had a little bit more of something and that something in this particular case was a bit more energy. When you, when you look at everything, you have timing, control, and creativity. Most everybody can do the control if you're competing. That's just doing the technique. And in the open level, that's what I'm looking for first, if people can do the technique. And both of those last couples, they could do it. But the first place couple had a little bit more ingenuity. There was a little bit more complexity with their movement and you can see that as an audience member and I can also see it with my skeptical eyes as a judge. And this couple is right here. She had the pink skirt on, he had the blue suit. They're doing the traditional Lindy Hop moves, but watch, watch some of these details here. Things like that take a little bit more discipline. Those little syncopation the leader is doing, the follower, sticking her leg out, doing extra movements to highlight personality within the basic language of Lindy Hop, that takes a little bit more discipline and they were the, able to nail that. Now, I will say some of their tricks weren't as impressive, their aerial tricks, um, as the second place couple, but I will tell you right now, the full package, what I was looking for is that. I wanted to see control, could they control the technique? They had that. They also had some timing with their movements that was spot on, a little thing that they did, a little matrix thing. I liked that too. But I also liked the nuanced syncopation movements that both of them were doing individually, why they were moving together as one in concert. Now, that's a hard thing to do. It's, it's, it's kind of easy to move with your partner sharing energy at different points once you've practiced the Lindy Hop technique enough. It's a different animal when you're trying to like improvise in between that without distracting from the main technique. And I like to call that syncopations, which basically means a rhythm on top of a rhythm. And so can you add rhythm and creativity and personality without botching the entire technique? That's, that's really hard to do. And the first place couple actually did that really well. So that's my list, guys. Who do you think was the winner? And give me your reasons why. Don't just say, hey, this is who I liked. But give me your reasons why. I like to know a little bit more and, and get into the philosophy of what makes you tick and how you like to value things in Lindy Hop. And I think dancers need to hear that too, like why you liked what they're doing. Like I say in every video, if you haven't competed, you need to. It's gonna stretch you if you do it. You might even fail a few times. It's it's a bit frustrating when that happens. I can remember the very first time I did a competition, I actually like karate kicked my partner in the head and in front of everybody it was terrible i felt stupid i didn't feel like i knew what i was doing and that could have been my downfall you know and and i didn't let that actually impact me the way i thought it was impacting me and i got back up and i started working and then i ended up you know crushing my next competition and getting first place and so you just never know what's going to happen if you continually get back up when you mess up so i encourage you guys if you haven't done it yet, get out there to do it. If you are doing it right now and you feel like you're not really getting the recognition that you need, start asking judges more questions. Start asking them what they're looking for, right? And so it will it will shape you a little bit, but it shouldn't. You, you don't wanna change who you are to basically make everybody like you. You wanna be able to do those fundamental things that people can recognize as somewhat object, objective, 
That's the control, that's the timing, that's the creativity, but you be you. You don't wanna just change to win first place because you'll never actually be content if that's the case. So that's just some some nuggets that I would, would share with you from years of experience doing that and competing. Find out what makes you tick, find out your personality, and refine that. You might not get the recognition now in the season that you're in, but a couple of years later as you refine your personality, most people will appreciate that. So with that said, let me know who you guys thought was a winner in the comment section below. Check out my free courses below. I hope it inspires you and helps you get to the next level in your lending hop. If I don't see some of you in my classes online, hopefully I get to see your comments below.